Instagram history now, just to reference. Well, it's right, but it's one thing to keep in mind is that, um, <coughs> like, people in the 70s, 80s, the only real way you could get it was through a contact, someone who owned, someone who either had access to Japanese television or knew a guy, and you would end up with a VHS copy that was sometimes as bad as 23rd generation. And the only generation is it's a copy. So that's 23 copies down. So, the, so, but you got what you got. And, and a lot of times it was either raw or badly subtitled. How many actually remember VHS? VHS copies. Sweet, I'm all over. <laughs> but then it, then it, it gradually progresses from that to being able to get it on DVD and then start getting streamlining, streamlining it down and then you sometimes get certain channels to carry it. But when you start it, you know, it's like, you know, it's like, you know, it's like, it's stuff that gets licensed in America, and, but there are good for every one or two that get run to America. I, I will fangirl about being Japanese so 
much fun, is that when they pack them in, um, you have long rides. Like people commute for like an hour or two. And so when you're packed there, you can't move. You don't even hold on to anything because there's no way to move. People fall asleep. Like people around you will just fall asleep. And you're just standing there, you know, slowly each stop, little people trickle out. And then after a while, it gets enough room that she actually can, you know, step aside. And the poor people who are asleep will start falling because they're no longer being held up. And so you're like, they're like holding them up. And they're like, you know, waking up. So yeah, they may take a nap, about 35 minutes or an hour to how long it takes before you have enough room to move. And for me, one of the things that uh, you get from Anime and Manga is that it doesn't really happen in Japan as a lot of the vocalizations of surprise and stuff. Like, ah, you know that. Actually, no, they do. Really? They do, yes. Uh, I started picking it up on it. But the, and you definitely, in anime, they don't show it as much, but how much you bow all the time. Like, you get so much that when you're on the phone talking to someone, people will start bowing. <laughs> You're, it's a foul, they can't even see you, but you're so used to the, the constant bowing. Oh, but they take it out of animation because that's really a lot of animation to have a person bowing all the time, so they just cut it. <laughs> it's cheaper that way. Yeah, it's very cheap. That's a fun thing about um, also anime, like their style. A lot of the style, stylistic choices that we now love about anime is all from it just being really cheap. Like the, the classic of their action pose and it's like flashy lights in the background. It's because it's a lot cheaper to just do one pose and then lots of flashy lights instead of actually doing the whole pose. That's because, yeah, they, most of the animation is very, very cheap. And now it's just what anime is, and it's cool. Or even the profile to the side where you just see the mouth. Oh, yeah, the mouth moving inside, so there's actually moved the mouth. I, and I have, there are people who actually draw comics with that mouth. And I'm like, no, that's, that's called cheap. And, but they're like, no, it's anime. <laughs> No, the comics. Well, I love that, that now it's uh, computer animation is starting to become more prevalent. So you're seeing a lot of really good series that are computer animated. And it, it, I mean, once you build the models, it's really cheap to animate that. Yeah. So. Uh, one, one of the ones I think kind of, kind of bucks the uh, simple pose trend is JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, where almost everything's a, a, a flash and dance show. <laughs> but but, it, but it's, it's a style choice. Yeah. Right? As you said, because a lot of people go for the simple one because you can. More than just action. Like the there's a lot of scenes where it's just, like, it's just, it's just Usagi and Monroe like, across the room, and that's you're kind of seeing stills, but there's a lot of emotion being given, and that's another yeah. thing they do, like to make more emotion than action. That's, yeah, and that's a lot of anime yeah. start focusing on emotion because it is easier to draw face, if you, you know, face right. and big eyes, and you know, like the big, big eye, like, what's it called? You know, lights in the eyes to make it. Oh, I'm so sad. A lot cheaper than actually you have them cry. Just some technical information about the amount of drawings involved here. So, so in Disney at the time, early age, like in the fifties, um, from from the to fifties, uh, Disney produced like twelve drawings per second. So <coughs> you talk about two hours. You do a calculation how many drawings involved in Disney's animation. Uh, Osamu Desuka, an Austro boy, is the creator of Austro boy. Uh, that production, Osamu was able to reduce the drawing to be six to seven drawings per second. So it almost reduced the cost in half. And through the creativity that we just talked about, big eyes, so you just shut the eyes, there's no move, movement going on here. here. And Austro boy just need to fly. <laughs> so you don't have to have him running or jumping like in a even dance. So these are the cheaper way to actually produce animation, which actually creates this distinct style because the budget is constrained here. So it's, it's in another way you see how creativity, you know, flew, flow with this whole idea of saving money and balancing out what, what's important in this. Well, at the end, you brought up a great thing at the panel yesterday about how anime is really from bottom up. And then American animation is top down when it comes from the management deciding what the story is going to be like. And it's the same thing with Japan, it's all bottom up, especially in manga. You have one guy usually writing the first three or four chapters of his manga and submits it to an editor and says, hey, this is going to work, this isn't going to work. But it's usually only one person doing this and they have to turn out weekly chapters for the most part. While in America we have comic books where you get you only have 24 pages, which is about what that guy is doing, the, the manga artist is doing in one week. 
the American artist is doing in one month. Have any of you read so if you read that series, please, this is actually a very famous series so it involves like some friendship, also like kind of fighting things and stuff, but it's quite realistic. So if you are interested in some realistic stuff, I'd like to find out about the industry, um, especially this is a good series to start. Does it give a stand-up? Bubble Bob. It's just, it's a little bit of progress. It's two guys decided to put them on together. Yeah, the same guys that did uh, Bento. Oh, okay. I have it as well. It's a dang good series. It's a, it's a good series, but the, the female love interest, I think, so. <laughs> <laughs> I, know, I know she's supposed to be doing it. I don't know. Yeah, 
there's, there's more. I was saying, there's, blood levels are also from that. I've heard. 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 I've
companies are currently experiment, experimenting with it, and if it does well, it'll, it'll perform, and if it doesn't go well, they'll go back to print, but I think it's going to be kind of both happening at the same time. Personal, personal traffic, personal uh, opinion on that. Viz does a weekly show that you'll need to get on their app, and I think it's about two bucks a week, and it's about eight or nine stories, I think, and it's full chapter, so it's not even 160 but I don't see, I don't see it fully digital in Japan. There's still different. Like their phones are a lot smaller, um, and they, they don't really do apps. It's not like our Yes, they still choose all the traditional art, the method to create new at this moment, most of them, especially the mainstream ones. So to think about how much Japanese like to hold down this tradition and everything, that that part is also very difficult.
or they'll say something and you know, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, Coco, Coco. Coco, Coco. I'm going to get a Coco, Coco. And then they'll just be like, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> which literally means alien, but um, they would, uh, like, <laughs> you think there's discrimination here, try to, man. I mean, if you're a guy, they instantly think that you don't know anything, which is true. I know that time I didn't know anything. But after two years, I had a good idea of what to do, and I would still have people be like, trying to speak slowly to me. I'm like, I'm speaking to you in Japanese just as fast as you are. Stop speaking slow. <laughs> well, it's, they're very, they're, I don't know, instantly. Very, this is our space. Uh, well, they have their uh, their entire culture is based on groups. There's in group, there's out group. You'll see right. this in anime too. Like you'll notice, there's never a lone hero. The lone hero are usually the villains, because to be alone in Japan is wrong. Like literally wrong. You cannot survive if you are a loner and you try to survive in Japan. You cannot. You have no idea how hard it is because in their culture. This is, I worked there and like in a work environment. When your boss doesn't like you, the way you find out is the grapevine. And you work the grapevine. So let's say my, I did some work and my boss didn't like it. In American culture, the boss will let you know directly in a quiet room by themselves. Not in Japan, but the boss does and tells his, you know, someone below him, and they'll tell someone below him. And they'll go around working around until finally it, that news gets to someone who feels comfortable enough, your friend, to approach you and tell you, your boss didn't like this, and you need to, you know, fix it up. And so then what you do is you never go to your boss to apologize, because being direct is rude. Instead, you talk to your friend back. Oh, I'm so sorry, let him know. And then he just goes right back out. <laughs> and the boss is like, oh, I'm so glad. It's like a permanent game of telephone. So if you were a watch, I had a friend. This is a real quick story. I had a friend um, who didn't get along well. She looked Japanese, so people will assume she knew Japan. And um, she was very direct, just not what she should be in Japan. And she always told people off. So one time, <laughs> in Japanese, not very nice, you should never tell someone off in a public setting. That's like the worst, that's like killing them, the worst thing to do, losing things. So she decided for Halloween, which they don't celebrate in Japan, to dress up as a famous character, which the kids loved, but it offended the, the principal at the time. So he did the you know the network, except no one was friends with her. She was never told that the principal was very much offended. So she wore that costume all week long. That's what the principal thought. Now he thought she was rebellious, purposely going against everything because everyone else knew she's. They they only know their way. So if everyone else knows, she must know. But no one was a friend of hers. So I traveled over to my side of the company, the guy Jean side, and went all the way to the top. And by then, because it's a grapevine, it's a grapevine student. He was getting this idea. She was this horrible person, destroying everything. And they had to get rid of her. They wanted her fired. So he had to come up back, talking to her, like, what happened? She's like, I don't know what I did. And then finally, oh, I wore a costume for Halloween. <laughs> and I'm getting fired for it. <laughs> well, any of you thinking about taking a Japanese program at any of the colleges, the, most of them are really well done, and also the, the fact that there's a lot of exchange students. Make good friends with them because yeah. they'll teach you the ins and outs and stuff that the, the, the class is not teaching you. I mean, you can learn proper speech, but they're not going to teach you idioms, they're not going to teach you slang, they're not going to teach you shortcuts on how to speak street level dialogue with people instead of proper, respectable talking to you. Right. And because I had a couple of these uh, uh, friends that were from Japan, every time I'd ask them to do something, they would be like, I don't know, Shitsune I can't, I got this, go. you'll never get a direct no Correct. out of these guys. So it's, it's like, oh, well, I kind of have something, I don't know, so they just kind of say, oh, okay, well, never mind. Or they'll flat out say yes and lie. In Japan, lying is not wrong if it saves space. So that's really weird to me at first. I'm like, you said yes, you like this. And when I get to know them better, they're like, well, well, I didn't know what to say. You don't say yes. You just say like no. And she's like, oh, I actually feel comfortable. Like, so you lied to me? Tell, tell me um, Sophie's story. Which one? The one where the where you were trying to find like oh, corn syrup. Oh, yeah, corn syrup. <laughs> All right, I was. Sorry. I wanted to make. Um, what's it called? 
popcorn bomb. And you need corn syrup for that. So this is really hard. I looked in the dictionary, nothing came up for the corn syrup. Please, my dictionary goes. So I decided, oh, it's easy. I knew corn. I can do syrup. We can do this. So I went to the grocery store and I asked them. Now, the problem with Japan is to save face, you have to help somebody. You know, if you can't help them, it's really rude to be like, I can't help you. I know, in America, we're like, please tell the truth. But no, no, no. So what they do is I would ask someone, and he had no idea. He just kept saying, corn syrup. Sweet? Because he's like, corn is not sweet. Sir, he just showed me to maple syrup. I'm like, no, it's like it's like a corn. It's like a sweet corn syrup. They take care of the corn. I'm like, no, it's like a corn, like a syrup. They can like, go back to maple syrup. I'm like, and after a while, they kept collecting helpers. And so I had like this whole pack falling around from maple syrup to the corn. And then they got the manager. And then I was just like, it's like corn syrup. I'm like trying to explain this. And then I'm like, they like, six down. They're all like, oh, trying to figure it out. I picked up maple syrup because I didn't want to be rude. And I was like, this is it. Thank you so much. And they're like, oh, I'm so glad. I'm so glad. I'm like, okay. And then they laughed up and I was like, ugh, forget this. New plan. <laughs> yeah, like, just, yeah, they don't want to be rude, but they're not helpful at all. <laughs> See, that, and the reason I made that cover tell story is it's a really good example of saving the face. Yes. If you, if, you, if you mess up, you don't want to bring attention to it. You kind of just want to somehow redeem yourself, even if it's a total fallacy. That's why in a lot of anime, when, when someone messes up, it's a big thing. Like, we don't see it as much, but in Japan, it's a huge thing to mess up, especially if it was a public display. Like, someone, or, yeah, you were seen doing something awful. It's a huge thing, because you can ruin your reputation, and reputation is your base. If you lose that, you're in huge trouble. We got about seven minutes left. There's a gentleman who's got in the back. Okay. Um, since you grew up in Japan for a long time, because... With that, be at least here, you know, like say, like the Funimation, you know, Crunchyroll, like online, how they genre, you know, like the specific types, you know, whether it's you know, like, Power Girl or it's like you know, like, uh, you know, stuff like that. Is that a thing in Japan, or is it just you know, it just comes out and then that's it? But in the U.S., we marginalize it, you know, so we know what's what. Or is it just like when it comes out, you know, manga is manga regardless of the genre? Um, they they don't really have fantasy sci-fi horror like we do, but they do have they have like shonen shoujo. Shonen is for uh, young boys or up to teenager age, and then shoujo is the same. But uh, and then they have I can't remember the name. Uh, and they have the older. Sign in. Yeah, sign in. It's like a it's like a shonen. Yeah, it's like a shonen. Yeah. Anyway, and then so they do it more by age groups. So this is for and. Uh, gender. So this is for this age group, and this is the age group, and we have the older versions. Um, and then they have hentai, which is that version. Yeah, right. <laughs> for it. Um, but they, yeah, they don't really, they don't really do like slice the pie. They don't split it up like that. So you can go to a store and go to a shoujo, and it basically has you have slice of life, funny, um, horror, and fantasy right next to each other. Because it's just what they do. It can be very confusing. A friend of mine went to Japan a couple months ago. And she was like, oh, I'm just going to look at the manga. The manga is that. I'm not fine. No. <laughs> she actually spent a good time trying to figure out why the horror was right next to the girl. How girl, the girl show the girl show. And about the, the only thing we can compare it to here in America is when you go to a bookstore. There's a text section. Oh, yeah. It's more like that. It's exactly. Young adult doesn't split up into all the different Yeah, you'll, you'll find you'll find you know, fantasy and horror. I watched that, and I don't have time to do 
five or six episodes at a time, but I made time for that series. So that would really just suck for um, And then I also watched the, the most recent of you know, the Even Good movies. So I'm dying waiting for the fourth one to come out. When did that come out? I think it's on, I think it's next month. Next, yeah. It's one of the few I know are really That one I think is supposed to be early October, but I wouldn't quote him that. <laughs> but, yeah. And who, who was it? Was it? It's, it's not, I, I see it the same way I see those learning, learning English. It's, you're learning another language, and, and yeah, manga, 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 or manga I heard refer to. Um, it, it, they're learning; they're, they don't know any better. <laughs> okay, hold on, correct it. It's manga. Okay. Um, and I think we have, I think we have the, the production company itself to blame for that. Yes. When you would watch the VHS tapes in the past, you know, most of you guys would know this one when you see stuff from manga. Like, I want to say don't let that that bother you too much. Anime is actually yeah, a word from, from French. Word, yeah, yeah so it's, it's a way that Japanese say French word of the Indonesia. So, so it's like it's cultural. English, English, this is how Indonesia. cultural exchange and language become a better flow of part of the culture. Yeah, like the Japanese picked up the word stop. They call stop to. So when I would say stop, they like, write to it and stop to. Like, no, because they're like, that's a Japanese word, that's an English word for you to find over it. Also, hello, is, they also picked up, and so when I would say hello, they'd be like, she spoke Japanese! Like, <laughs> in the school I was, I was not speaking any English, so they'd always be like, hello, and I'd say hello back, because that's English, but to them it's Japanese. And they'd be like, hi, I'm to speak Japanese! <laughs> yeah, and, and it's just, it's one language over to another, I think, but you know, the only thing that drove me nuts, if you were going with that question, is when they, instead of having a section in the videos for they can call it they call it animation. Block the wall. But but it's but they know what it is now, so it's okay. It just takes time. I don't I, mean, I don't get buffer over it. I just let it go. We got about a minute and a half left. Anybody have a question? Oh, like Thanks. Some people have seen some familiar faces from all three panels. Thank you for watching the video.